everyone, it's Alex, and today I wanted to review Second Place by Rachel Cusk, which comes out early next month. I'm no stranger to Rachel Cusk's work, having read her Outline trilogy a few years ago, and I found it to be a really big contribution to my reading life at that time. At the time of having read the trilogy, I hadn't really read fiction like that before, where it had this gracefulness and resistance to the conventions of a novel. Similar to the Outline trilogy, Second Place is a book that really values the sense of communication in a very conversational way between its cast of characters. We also have another solitary female narrator that values the aspects of art, life, and beauty. But what I think Cusk does such a good job at is being able to render a character that especially concentrates on the idea of inherent femininity. That is, assuming if what could be inherently feminine comes from things maybe that we instinctively like, or really even that pushing kind of the binaries of masculinity and femininity. In second place specifically, our narrator's name this time is just with this elusive title by the name of M. M is a mother and also a wife, and within their family she also has what is known as the second place, which is a building within their residence where now they would like to house artists to do their residency and just work there. The artist in question is also only known through a letter, and his name is L. So now I should mention that with these identifiers of M and L, that the structure of the story is on the basis of M telling the story to someone named Jeffers. So because of this, we know that in some instances of the framework of how the story is being told, that M is an unreliable narrator because of ways in which she describes responses to the people around her. And with M concentrating on what makes her inherently maybe feminine or maybe identifying as what it means to be a woman, one example is with M's daughter's boyfriend. He explains that his parents, his father and mother, are completely successful, which I feel like M kind of says very quickly as a way of feeling insecure about her own vulnerabilities with that subject matter of, again, being a wife and also a mother. And Cusk surprisingly really reigns this in as a narrative device of really using this as a way to not build distrust with M, but using these instances as ways of just promoting that vulnerability I mentioned earlier and also that insecurity with understanding that M is in ways showing us through her literal storytelling to whoever Jeffers is about her unconsciousness to stray from the pedestal of what it means to be a parent in this case. And we realize that M's greatest insecurity is her perception or how she's perceived by L, primarily how L admits that he does not want to use M as a subject of his paintings, even though he doesn't mind using M's family as subjects. Which to me kind of makes everything full circle with initially me thinking that this book is just about M, but I don't think it's a coincidence that also with the character L, that I think between M and L that they serve as mirrors to each other, with second place being just as much about L as it is about M. More likely than not, in my opinion, being again this reinforcement of this binary between femininity and masculinity. So it all, it all becomes like this very, you know, playfulness of this inner sort of thinking about the perceptions of people's identity. So I'll go ahead and say that if that doesn't sound interesting to you as like a reader, then this book will likely not be for you. There are so many <laughs> passages in this book that are reflective of this particular feeling of trying to concentrate on investigating this relationship between how we become accomplices or complicit in our navigation of relationships between other people. And of course for M, that would be her ability to sort of see herself as a mother and a wife and whatever else. So I think Cusk is a great person for conceptions and ideas, but in the most intellectual way possible, I can easily say that Cusk won't be everyone's vibe. Although it is funny because I think Second Place, in comparison to the Outline trilogy, is way more of a conventional novel with a clear beginning, middle, and end. But it is just humorous to me because I think Cusk uses plot as more of a convenience that she uses to her advantage. Rather than feeling controlled by the serendipity of life, that might be hard to construct with the conventions of plot. Because overall, I will say with Cusk, and it happens again here in second place, I'm not too impressed with her sense of transitioning scenes because they don't really feel like they ever 
have this narrative momentum. Her imagery sometimes can be pretty plain as if she's kind of trying to speed up to the parts that she likes best about all of this reflecty stuff going on. Specifically, I think of whenever she symbolically mentions about how she feels like in relationship with her husband, that her life feels like a part in a play. Although again, with that sense of self-awareness and humor, because I think Cusk realizes that all of this can be pretty like, pretentious. There's a funny part to me where M's daughter's boyfriend just proclaims that he's gonna shut himself away for a few days and write a really long novel and he does and he takes two hours to read it to everybody and then L actually responds saying that was awful. So while I think concepts like art and beauty and life aren't anything new that I've or I've just read from Cusk before with the Outline Trilogy, I do still think overall she has this earnestness to these approaches of these concepts. Because I think in the wrong writer's hands, a lot of this feeling can be really self-congratulatory and indulgent, but I think I really feel this, again, earnestness from Cusk to really investigate how writing fiction helps her have better clarity about life. Because Cusk actually is someone with a very large writing portfolio between nonfiction especially, so it feels really conscious about her choices to write fiction, especially with Second Place being the first novel she's written since the Outline Trilogy. And I think Cusk's relationship with things like plot can be best summarized with, again, there were plenty of passages I loved in this book, but there's one in particular I wanted to read to you. I still somehow believed in the inexorability of that other force, the force of narrative, plot, call it what you will. I believed in the plot of life and its assurance that all of our actions will be assigned a meaning one way or another, and that things will turn out, no matter how long it takes, for the best. The possibility of disillusion of identity itself, of release, with all of its cosmic, ungraspable meanings. Again, if you were totally bored by that quote of self-examination, then you need to run away from this book. But for me, personally, I am a simp for this kind of stuff. With that being said, reading Second Place was this wonderful familiarity in having read Cusk, um, now I, I think like almost three years ago since the Outline Trilogy. And more importantly, I think in my own reading life, this also was a really nice contribution to see how much my feelings towards novels like this have changed since having read the Outline Trilogy, where I don't think Second Place is anything like revolutionary. It is something that feels very comforting, again, to return to. So if you're into power dynamics and gender, and existential crises, then I would definitely check out Second Place. And at some parts with the quotes, it even made me a bit teary-eyed, which I think that Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books said that she cried. And I don't know if CJ from CJ Reads cried reading this, but now I just imagine the three of us in a room crying together. Again, Second Place comes out early next month in May, so you can be sure to grab a copy then. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.